Hi, it's Linda from creativeplr.com. And what you may not know about me is I love digital paper of all types. That was the first thing many years ago when I started creating educational resources that I started making my own digital paper to use as borders and frames in my task cards and other um, items that I would use in the classroom. My decor in the classroom, I'd use my own digital paper, and, and I still love it. It's something that relaxes me when I come home from work. I can create some di digital paper and I get lost for hours and next thing you know I have a hundred pages of digital paper um, I toss out a lot of it I look at it the next morning and some of it I don't like as much and I usually create in Photoshop however you can do the same thing in PowerPoint now you can also do it in Canva um, but I really like using PowerPoint uh, better and so this square here is a three inch square and if you watched the previous video that I showed how to take a tile from Repper and use that three inch tile to make a digital paper with a repeating pattern or an overall pattern it's the same process so i'm going to upload some um, pictures of clip art that i've gotten from creative fabrica and i'm going to scroll over them just a little bit because what i find is i want the ping png images i don't want um, I don't want any of the JPEG because they won't have a a background. And I think that one, and it didn't pick them all up, so I can go back and get the rest. I'll hold down my control key this time. I want that one. Oh, I like that. Um, oh, let's try that and that. And I'm immediately going to scale them down, and then I'm going to go back a upload a few more images I may not use them all but um, I like to have a lot of choices and there was something over here I really liked yeah it's it's this bottle with the confetti and let's see there was something else I liked this and um, and I liked the balloon and I'm going to do the same thing as I did before and I'm going to try to scale down a bunch of stuff. Now, since this is a three inch square, these images really aren't that large. Um, and then I'm going to start just arranging them somewhere on this little square. And I think I want my balloon in this corner and 2023. Oh, happy new year bottle and like that. Mm -hmm. Let's see, there's my streamer, and this is getting a little busy, uh, but I like that bottle. So let me just rearrange it a little bit, and let's get rid of that. Usually I like to have one large image in the center, and then something at the four corners, but you want a little bit of white space as well. Okay, and I'm going to get this. Okay, so I'm happy with that. And once you do that, then you highlight all of it, you group it together and you save it as a picture. Before you save it as a picture in PowerPoint, I know this is something I've said before, but it bears saying again, before you save it as a picture, you go over to File, Options, and you scroll down on your Advanced, you scroll down where it says Default Resolution High Fidelity, you change it to 330, you have to do that every time you come in and do something. Um, High fidelity and 330 or even 300 is not the same thing. And so you want to make sure you have the highest quality image. Right click on that bunch of grouped items, save as a picture. And this new computer just automatically saves everything somewhere else. And then I do that. Now, this square was three inches. So I'm going to go over to my other PowerPoint uh, file. And I've already set up the guidelines. This background now is 12 inches. And so I'm going to insert my picture that I just created. And let's see, where is it? And I've done a couple already this morning. It's this one. And you notice when it comes in, it doesn't come in as three inches. So we are not going to worry about what it is. We're going to make it three inches. And I am going to do this. I'm going to open up that file and click off where it says relative and lock and I'm going to make this three and I'm going to make this three 
and now it's three inches. And I'm going to put it up here in the box as careful as I can. And I'm going to copy it and I'm going to paste and I'm going to cop group those two. Copy, paste. I'm going to group those four. I'm going to copy and I'm going to paste. And I'm going to put it down here. Now you're probably thinking, well, yeah, you left off that space and that space. I did. I am going to copy it here. And once I do, I'm going to stagger it about halfway. And then I'm going to just click on one tile and I'm going to put it right there. And it's halfway as well. And now I'm going to group these five and I'm going to copy that and I'm going to put it at the bottom. And I'm going to do my best to line it up. Sometimes my best is not quite good enough, but that's close enough. Close enough for government work. Oh, it's off a little bit. Now it's better. Okay. Okay, so. Uh, now I'm going to, and I know what you're thinking, like, well, it's off the paper. Um, that's okay if it's off the paper. I'm going to group all of this together now, and I'm going to save as a picture. And I just checked that it was it's now, well, I better not, I better check again. I want to check that it's um, 3.30, and I'm pretty sure that I just checked this two seconds ago. Yes, it's 3.30, so that works. I'm going to save it as a picture, and then I'm going to take care of where it's offset. Now, for seamless paper, uh, the idea is that if you cut off one edge, you know, you can put several pieces next to each other and, it's, and the design keeps going on. It doesn't have to be seamless. You, you don't have to make it seamless, but I like that illusion. And so what I'm going to do now is the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take off these lines and I'm going to just click ruler guideline and I've just got a blank one and I'm going to insert the picture that I just made of that whole page and we're hoping that I saved it correctly. Okay. And I know to line it up and I can do the same thing as I did before. I can unlock it, not make it relative and I'm going to make it 12 by 12 and I have to scoot it over a little bit. And it's not going to make it 12 by 12 because the guys that are hanging out, um, it wants to consider that part of the 12. So I'm going to have to just move it just a little bit and make sure I have the top and the bottom correctly. And I want to make sure these guys that were that went to the edge here are still going to the edge. And that looks pretty good. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on it. I'm going to go to picture format. I'm going to say crop. And this is the part that always gets me because uh, my eyesight in that one eye is so bad that I have to zoom in to see where those that guideline is. And I'm going to cut it right at the edge of the paper. Uh, and I'm going to crop it. Okay. Now I have my paper. And you'll see where I've cut it off there. It's, it's off a hair, but it's pretty close to seamless paper. And so there's an overall design. So I'm going to save this, and that is my paper that I'm going to use. Now, you may be thinking, like, well, you know, that's kind of nice, but, um, you know, I like colored paper. I don't want everything with a white background. But look, um, these are PNG with transparent backgrounds. So I can do anything I want with this paper. I can say design. Uh, what I've got now is an overlay, and you know overlays are very important. What you can do with overlays is amazing. You can actually take these overlays and put them in your on top of your digital planners and journals in your covers, and do all kinds of tricks with them. You know, make them really transparent so they just kind of peek through the background. But I can change the color, and I'm really fond of this one color in this balloon. And so I can add a colored background. I can save this. Um, I can save this as a uh, picture. Um, I can change the color to a pale gray. Um, I actually like that. I can change it to a blue. I can change it to this pink. I like that too. So you can have fun with this and you can create digital papers just like this. Whole variety of colors. Um, I'm going to be gifting these to uh, people, and so um, I'll put the link when they're all done, 
and you can have a set of papers for New Year's. Have a great one. Until next time, keep creating.